The best epigenetic clock for predicting chronological age is the Horvath test. And that's what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got DNA MH or DNA methylation age, otherwise known as epigenetic age. And this is using the Horvath test. On the x-axis, we've got chronological age going from birth through 100 years. And note that there are a lot of different colored circles on this plot. This is a multi-cell and tissue clock. In terms of the correlation, we can see that the Horvath clock has a correlation coefficient of 0.94 for its ability to predict chronological age. Now, for a perfectly linear positive correlation, a correlation coefficient of 1.0 would be perfectly linear, so that this correlation is 0.94 indicates that the Horvath test is strongly correlated with chronological age. So with that in mind, what's my data? So around a year ago at this time, we saw that my Horvath epigenetic age, also known as intrinsic age, was 56.3 years, which was seven years older than my chronological age at that time. Absolutely terrible for someone who's trying to live possibly, you know, 123 years if I can. I don't think I'll get there with data like this. So blood test results from the October 9th, 2023 test just came in. So year over year results. So how am I doing? Have I improved or is this worse? And for this test, we can see that it was 49.4 years, which is a seven year reduction for Horvath's epigenetic age year over year. So this is where I could probably do a little dance and a little celebration. But the fact is, while this is technically true, it's not an accurate representation of the full picture. So for that, how does 2023's data compare against 2022, as I have nine tests over that period, which is what we'll see here. Data for 2022 on the left, for 2023 on the right. On the y-axis, we've got intrinsic age, again, Horvath's epigenetic age. And these data are generated by True Diagnostic. If you want to measure your own Horvath epigenetic age, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. So in 2022, over three tests, my average Horvath epigenetic age was 55 years. Again, pretty terrible, about five years older than my chronological age. Thus far in 2023, the average Horvath epigenetic age is 52.8 years, which is a 2.2 year reduction for this test uh, comparing 2023 versus 2022. So clearly not a seven year reduction. When putting it into context, it's on the right track, but definitely not uh, as exaggerated as a seven year reduction. So in order to make further gains and progress towards further reducing this, which factors are significantly correlated at this time after nine tests with, with Horvath's epigenetic age? With the goal, obviously, of repeating a 49.4 measurement as I did for this test, and potentially going even lower and getting even better. So to address that, first, let's take a look at correlations for macro and micronutrients with Horvath's epigenetic age. And to assess that, I looked at 42 variables, again, macro and micronutrients. And in terms of what was significant, here we can see that only two met a p-value threshold of less than or equal to 0.05. Now note that for an earlier for an earlier iteration of this video, body weight was significantly correlated with Horvath's epigenetic age, which is now just outside of significance with a p-value of 0.06. So in terms of the most significant, or uh, this was copper, uh, the mineral copper in this case with a significant positive correlation. In other words, a relatively higher copper intake in my data is significantly correlated with an older epigenetic age using the Horvath test. Now I get the majority of my copper intake from two sources, cacao beans and mushrooms. Mushrooms weren't significantly correlated with Horvath's epigenetic age, but cacao beans were in the same direction and relatively close to significance with a p-value of 0.07. In, uh, conversely, vitamin B12 is inversely, significantly inversely correlated with Horvath's epigenetic age. So a relatively higher B12 intake is significantly correlated with a younger Horvath epigenetic age. Now, I don't know which, if any of these variables, actually impact Horvath's epigenetic age. So the goal is to follow every significant correlation. So what does that mean in practice? So to keep copper and cacao intake towards the low end of my intake range, that would be following the correlation. So for example, for copper, uh, I've, uh, my intake range over those nine tests is 3.9 to 5 milligrams per day. And for cacao beans, it's 2.4 to 9.8 grams per day. Now to follow the correlation, since it's a positive correlation, eating towards the low end of my range would be following the correlation with the goal of, if it is causation, which I don't know, uh, 
reducing Horvath's epigenetic age. Now, how am I doing for that? Through November 17th, and this is from October 9th, so starting from when the last test happened, through uh, just a couple days ago or yesterday, my average intake for copper and cacao intake are 3.7 milligrams and 1.9 grams per day. And that's an average daily intake as I weigh all my food and record it uh, using chronometer. So in terms of following the correlations, we can see that 3.7 is less than 3.9 and 1.9 is less than 2.4. So I'm currently on the low side of my range following that correlation or following those correlations, even though cacao beans is just outside of significance. And for vitamin B12, that's relatively simple. Just keep it in the approach as I included that prior to the last test with the goal of reducing homocysteine. So maybe it was able to reduce Horvath's epigenetic age too. Again, there's no way to know if it's causation or not. All right, so what about foods? Which foods are significantly correlated with Horvath's epigenetic age? So to assess that, I looked at correlations for 41 foods that I've consumed, commonly consumed over, this, over these nine tests. And in terms of what's significant, only three met that threshold of being less than 0.05 for the p-value. And each were significantly inversely correlated. So meaning relatively higher intakes was significantly correlated with a younger Horvath epigenetic age. So what, what does that mean in practice? How, should I follow, how can I follow the correlations? For salt intake, my range during these nine tests is 1732 to 1770 milligrams per, per day. When considering it's an inverse correlation, a relatively higher intake may be related to a younger Horvath epigenetic age. So to follow the correlation, I, I should be towards the high end of my range. And thus far, since the last test, October 9th, I'm averaging 1772 1772 milligrams of sodium per day. So I'm following that correlation as that's towards the high end of my range. For turmeric, my intake range over these nine tests has been 1.8 to 2.3 grams per day. To follow the correlation, I should be towards the high end of my range. Current average daily intake is 2.5 grams per day, 2.5 grams of turmeric per day. So that too is following the correlation. And then last but not least, beets intake, my range over these nine tests using the Horvath test, 196 to 219 grams per day. And I'm currently at 219 grams per day. So that too is at the high end of my range following the correlation. So then the big question is after these five foods or nutrients following the correlations, following the data, will it work? And I'm gonna retest or test number seven in 2023 is scheduled for November 27th, so about a week from now. So that data should be available sometime uh, late December, early January. So stay tuned for that in an upcoming video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic and telomere testing, NAD quantification, at-home metabolomics, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, including ApoB, green tea, dye tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, just like the shirt I'm wearing here. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Dye Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.